My name's Ish. Today on this episode, we're gonna go over the bug room. So behind me here, this whole expansive wall is where all our slings are housed. Each individual bin contains a, a species of sling and it houses anything between the most common animal, like a curly hair sling to the most rare and exotic, like the, like the Borneo neon blue leg. Like one of the ones I personally love is these Amazon blue blooms over here. These guys are juveniles. They get about like anywhere between six to eight inches leg span. And as they mature, they darken out to be almost black with like a pinkish cephalothorax, almost similar to a, like a purple bird eater. If you could see that there. Also in males, they become a lot more pink and as they, when they sexually mature, the femurs actually turn a dark blue color. Then if we take a look over here, we have one of your hobby classics, which is the orange baboon, the uh, Usambara. That little guy right there will grow up into being a large, bright orange tarantula. So baboons are basically described a tarantula that comes out of the continent of Africa. They do not, they lack the eradicating hairs that new worlds have, but in return, they actually tend to be a lot more defensive where they'll rear up, their fangs will come out. Um, and they're typically more fossorial in nature, meaning they either make a burrow or a massive web house that they live in. Some common baboons, like the ones I just showed you, is the uh, Usambara orange baboon, king baboons. All those animals come from Africa, are named baboons as such because they're actually named after the hairiness of the baboon. Another cool species I wanna show you a little bit more on the uncommon side is the Siberi earth tiger. Relatively new species in the hobby. Right now, they don't look like much, but when they grow older, they get up to eight inches plus with a deep purple violet color that covers their entire body. Earth tigers refer to tarantulas that come from mainly Southeast Asia within a certain group or uh, a family, let's just call it a family of spiders, mainly Fasoria as well. Um, another one to compare it to would be like your Thai tigers or your cobalt blues are, earth, are popular earth tigers. Up here we have what we refer to as the giant red knee, which is um, Brachypelma smithi, or it used to be referred to as Anitha. They look pretty similar to your Hamorais, get larger and their color patterning develops into a slightly different tone. So if you look over here, I'll show you another cool animal it comes from Southeast Asia. This is referred to as the big black earth tiger. It doesn't look so black now, but once again, as it matures and it grows, it gets darker and darker to almost solid black spider that gets around six to eight inches in leg span. Earth tigers refer to a, a subfamily of tarantulas that come mainly out of Southeast Asia that are mainly either fossorial, basically heavy webbers that web with the entire enclosure or both. So if you go over here, some of our larger stuff is over here. So right here, I have subadult female Mexican fire legs. Another pretty popular new world tarantula, good for beginners, because they don't really bite. The worst thing they mostly do is kick their hairs that a lot of new worlds do which basically just does minor irritation or itchiness to your skin. Another cool, bigger animal uh, sling that we have over here is the golden blue leg baboon. And this guy, they are not the biggest, but their color, you really can't argue with that. The contrast is makes these one of the more sought after baboons in the hobby. So let's take a quick break from tarantulas and talk about one of the bigger groups of invertebrates in the hobby, which is scorpion. Over here, I got some of my hot scorpions and basically hot means they're medically significant, which in simpler terms means don't get stung. This right here is a Tunisian fat tail name obviously comes from the thickness of the tail. These guys have the venom powerful enough to potentially actually be fatal, but to actually gauge 
how potent it is is a bit more difficult. And since we're on the top of the hot, we just can't ignore the titular Deathstalker, arguably the most venomous scorpion known to man. These guys originate mainly out of Egypt and other parts of the Middle East, where they mainly cruise around at night, basically looking for whatever soft body bug they can grab and use their potent venom to immediately take them down and eat, because in the desert you can't be too picky. Down here, I have Australian forest scorpions. These little guys are almost flat in nature and in nature they hide in crevices and in under bark and stuff where they can fit in through the smallest cracks. They're not hot at all. Actually they're almost entirely harmless. They're not hostile or defensive in the slightest and they are communal. Yeah most scorpions are not communal but there are some that are like Australian forests or that whole genus that they're in are communal. Bark scorpions in the genus Ceneroides are communal, and a few others are here and there. As far as communal bugs go, one of the most popular communal spiders is the Socotra blue leg baboon. These guys in nature actually make almost small colonies where the mothers actually rear their young and will, yep. catch, and will catch prey, mash it up so the little ones can drink from it. Yes, when they molt, the blue pops up a lot more, and as they age, the blue and brown contrast will go up. Alright, so this here is a Congo Emperor Scorpion. Very closely related to the classic emperors you may have seen before. Um, I personally find them more attractive because they have a nice sheen to them. Their claws are red and more uh, are redder than the classic emperors. Uh, I also do personally like their body type more, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, these guys are a teeny bit more defensive than your emperors, but they're not completely unhandable. Uh, I always suggest when trying to handle a scorpion or a spider, to use something that's not your hand to coax it out. So even because you never know, even the most passive animal always has a bad day. But as you can see, sometimes they'll come out on their own. But as a uh, general rule, I will always use something like a tongs or even like a stick to kind of coax them out. You never want to use your own hand because even the most passive species sometimes will either get startled or just not feeling it. You, you just want to avoid any form of potential injury to you or the animal. These guys like it a lot more or a lot wetter than like the hots I just showed you previously. So basically hots tend to come from, like I said, Egypt, Middle East where there is a lot more of a desert environment. These come from like the Congo and the Democratic Republic, where most of the areas they come from is a forested area. And they make holes where it's a lot more humid. Another group of animals that come in, that people love in inverters are centipedes. Over here, I have your classic Vietnamese centipedes. Over here, I have your uh, Salmon Island centipedes. They're not really a small species. And centipedes are definitely not an animal you want to actually handle and take out unless absolutely necessary. Other kinds that I have is the Solomon Island Green Giant. He may not look so giant now, but this guy can get almost up to 12 inches under the right circumstances with a solid olive tone green. And the different, a good thing to note is this species is actually in a different genus which is known as Ethnostigmus. Ethnostigmus are also known to get really thick and stocky while Scolopendra, like your, uh, your Vietnamese, they're more slender and long and a lot more fat. Another kind that we carry or have currently is the Solomon Island Red. These guys also get sizable around eight to 10 inches, solid scarlet red or orange centipede. Some specimens even have a purplish tint to them. Of all the centipedes, the two of my personal favorites that we have is the Solomon Island Purple Centipede, which is in that same group as the green one I showed you earlier. Let's see if we can coax him out. And there he is. 
in the light you could see that metallic purple sheen that they have also this particular species only ma maxes out like at six inches tops but the other guy is a Solomon Island black <clears throat> which is from my personal experience the biggest one that comes out of that region that's not a full-grown animal he still has a few inches to grow right now if I were to guess this is probably like a seven or eight inch animal biggest one I've personally seen of these almost a foot this species which is um, they I think they're called the Pacific Asian giant centipedes ethnostigmus uh, rubripes is actually known to be the biggest centipede that comes out of Southeast Asia thus far I showed you only arachnids and myriapods which are your centipedes this here is one of the insects that we carry which is actually the Asian gold mantis. Mantises are well known for their voracious appetite. Also, their seemingly intelligence in their eyes. They like to track your movement. They're aware of their, they're very aware of their surroundings. These guys get maxed out around like four inches or so. Mantis, a general uh, lifespan of mantis is anywhere between a year and a half to two years top. We're gonna see if he's hungry right now because one of the things people like about mantis is the way they eat. So on the same topic as feeding, I want to show you the feeding response of one of our tarantula slings. This is the mascara bird eater, also known as the painted bloom. These guys get actually arguably one of the biggest in the genus. I've seen specimens that have been up to 10, 10, 11 inches as a sexually mature female. Their coloration right now, uh, the whole genus, they tend to come out the sack of an orange uh, abdomen with a Christmas tree pattern. But as they age, the uh, abdomen will darken out, turns to like almost a blackish color with red hairs. And in this particular species, the uh, cephalothorax and certain segments of the legs will turn either like a, a light khaki color to almost like a orange, like almost picture like a bigger brachypelma, like a bigger red knee almost. And he's coming up. <laughs> get a clear shot of the abdomen. Oop, here we go. Another cool fact about this genus is they're not very well known to be reclusive So these actually make a really good display tarantula because you have a big colorful animal that doesn't like to hide it either Either goes underneath where you can see its legs poking out or sometimes they just sit out just waiting for prey and They'll always tackle the prey with that same veracity and lastly I want to show you guys how a, uh, a scorpion feeds this right here is a black fat tail Another medically significant species, very active, with that impressive thick tail and that shiny black carapace. Mm -hmm. that strong venom they immediately immobilize and kill the prey so it doesn't have a chance to get away if you look closely the, you can see its mouth parts already going to work towards the head there That concludes the tour of the bug room. I really appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching this with us. Um, please um, remember to like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time.